Hey guys, it's MJ, the student's actuary, and in this video, I'm going to explain the Bitcoin ETF. But before we do that, let's quickly look at what is a Bitcoin and what is an ETF. After that, I'm going to give the reasons for combining the two and why the idea got rejected. So when it comes to Bitcoin, it's a bit of a mystery. We know that it's decentralized and it's on some sort of blockchain, but what actually is it? Last year, I made a video saying, is Bitcoin a commodity or a currency? Commodity, I'm meaning, should we be comparing Bitcoin to something like gold and silver? Or should we be comparing Bitcoin to US dollars and the sterling pound? Or is Bitcoin something different? Is it some sort of payment mechanism, in which case we should compare it to PayPal and Visa and American Express? Now, the reason why Bitcoin has become so popular is because in the past, well, with other assets, governments can freeze your assets if you do something wrong. But when it comes to Bitcoin, they have no control over it. Also, governments have these things called capital controls, whereas if you have Bitcoin, you can easily move your capital outside of a country in what's known as capital flight. You can also use Bitcoin to dodge the tax man as you can hide a lot of income earned. But the problem with Bitcoin is that people don't really know how much it's worth. And there's a lot of volatility. The price is going up and the price is going down. Also, there are some fundamental flaws in the Bitcoin technology. It's getting very slow, it's gone over capacity, which is making it very expensive, and there's rumors of a Bitcoin split. We might have Bitcoin Classic and something else called Bitcoin Unlimited, but that's beyond this video. Now I want to talk about ETFs, and these things are growing very quickly and becoming very popular. So what I want to do is, just to help us understand an ETF, I want to ask these eight questions. So what is it? It's an investment vehicle. And it's something that is listed on the stock exchange. And it's associated with passive investing, diversification, liquidity. And essentially, what you're doing is instead of buying a whole bunch of random securities, you're, you're putting them all into a basket and you're just buying one. Yes, there's a little bit of documentation and some few more parties involved. But essentially what you can do with this now is you can buy like an equity index, you can buy a whole basket of bonds, or even do like a style like value or growth investing all within one security. And the security can be listed, traded, they can be created, they can be redeemed, and they're also regulated. And the most important parameters around exchange traded funds is the net asset value, the fees, and the number of shares. And if you divide the net asset value by number of shares, you can get the price. And ETFs there can replicate indexes and they can comply with various investment mandates. So why do we want a Bitcoin ETF? Well, essentially what it's going to do, it's going to be allowing Bitcoins to be traded on the stock market. And that's actually pretty cool. Now, the reasons for doing this is going to make it very easy to buy Bitcoin. It's going to reduce the hacking risk. It's going to reduce the complexity. Remember, if you want to get Bitcoins now, you have to open a wallet and do all these weird things. Also, you have to go through those exchanges, and they're actually quite expensive. So we're going to be reducing costs. There's going to be a lot more market makers, which means we're going to see an increase in liquidity. Also, being on the stock market, it's going to increase the brand awareness of Bitcoin even more. And this is going to increase demand, specifically if institutional investors now getting, get involved with it, which is going to drastically increase the price. It's also going to allow for short selling, you know, some derivatives can be created around it. And one of the articles I read, it said that it will allow for fractional ownership. And while this is true with ETFs, with other securities, that's not the case with Bitcoin, because a Bitcoin can be split into something known as Satoshis, which is like one millionth of a Bitcoin. So the person who wrote that article didn't know Bitcoin too much, but we'll let that one slide. What I want to talk about now is why Bitcoin got rejected by the Securities Exchange Commission. And the main reason was saying that Bitcoin is not diversified. And remember, that's the whole idea of an exchange traded fund, is that instead of buying every single share on the stock exchange, you're buying one security, which is a basket of all of them. And so what they say is that when it comes to an ETF, the maximum you can hold of any one security is 10% of your total portfolio. But with this exchange traded fund, it would be 100% in Bitcoin. Now, the last three reasons I thought were quite funny because they said Bitcoin is unregulated. Well, duh, they're trying to get it regulated now. And you're saying that we can't regulate it because it's unregulated. It's a little bit silly. 
This, this one was also quite uh, entertaining. They said surveillance and enforcement is difficult. And that's one of the big drivers or why people want to use Bitcoin is because of this very reason. Also because of the idea that there's no central depository that controls it. Although this does, does have the disadvantage that if your Bitcoins are stolen, shame because the trades are irrevocable. Now, another thing why I think that the, the ETF got rejected is because if you look at who the ETF manager for this one was going to be, it was these guys called the Winkelwasser twins. Remember, they're the guys who were like, we created Facebook and they sued Mark Zuckerberg. Now, if you look at who the ETF sponsor is going to be, again, it's the Winkelwasser twins. Who's going to be the provider of the reference price? It's going to be the Winkelwasser twins. Who's going to be the custodians and actually hold all these bitcoins? You guessed it, the Winkelwasser twins. Now, the Security Exchange Commission says that there might be a conflict of interest. So I just feel so bad for these guys. Everything they try and do, whether it's social media or ETFs, it just seems to fail for them. Although, in my personal opinion, I do feel as if Bitcoin is in a bit of a bubble and that it's you know, overpriced. Although I've been saying that when Bitcoin was around $750, I think it's now $1,200 and the price is always changing every minute, so I can't pinpoint it exactly. But look, I mean, I really love cryptocurrencies. I've invested quite a bit in Litecoin and you'll know from my channel that I like to have a lot of fun with the Dogecoin. And I mean, I've even gone and raised a little bit of funding to create my own coin. Although where all these other coins have got a very much a capitalist mentality, mine's going to have a little bit of a socialist mentality. But if you want to hear more about that, I'll be releasing videos in the future. So please make sure that you do subscribe to my channel and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think Bitcoin's overpriced? Do you think it should be on an exchange trader fund? Let me know and we can chat down there. Thanks, guys.